to vote because it was it was every single party that's currently in government, with the exception of, of, of UKIP, that uh, you know had a say in this. Uh, UKIP obviously didn't have a say in this, but it's about time the British public knew so they can make their own decisions at the ballot box come May. Suzanne Evans, thank you. Suzanne Evans, their deputy chairman of UKIP. John Rental, you heard from before, uh, writes for the Independent on Sunday, and Sir Ming Campbell. Just coming, well, it's just past, actually. I can't read the clock. My microphone's in the way. It's 20 past one on Five Lives. Afternoon edition with Dan Walker and Sarah Brett. And the chief executive of the energy company, Quadrilla, has told Five Live he's disappointed that planning officers have recommended that Lancashire County Council refuses permission for fracking at two sites. A report highlighted the potential noise from drilling and also an increase in traffic. Next week, the Council's Development Committee are due to make a final decision on the company's application to drill for shale gas at two sites in the county. That's Little Plumpton and Rosica Wood. Uh, Francis Egan is Quadrilla's chief executive. We believe that we have already complied with all the planning guidance, and that's why I say we are surprised by the uh, planning officer's uh, views on noise and and traffic, which are quite technical issues, we're going to have to look in detail as to why he's come to those conclusions. I would expect we can deal with them. If they turn down the applications, uh, then we would have to consider whether we want to appeal that decision. And the appeal process clearly takes several months, so that would delay uh, any operations to decide clearly. The impact of the fall in gas prices in particular and, and oil prices in the UK is to cause the decline in the North Sea to accelerate. So we are ever more dependent on imported gas and will be. The price will go back up, but the fields will not reopen. So unless we develop our shale gas resources, we are going to be wholly dependent on foreign imports to heat our homes and cook our food. Uh, Five Lives' Nick Garnett is out and about for us today. Nick, tell us exactly where you are and a bit more about right. these two sites as well. Right, let me tell you about the Fylde. This is the Fylde coast in front of me. Uh, it's the area of land that, that basically is between the M6 motorway going up and down the country and Blackpool. So it's a great big area of flat open fields. Now, Rosica is one of the areas where the, the, the drilling is planned to take place. It's a hamlet, a few houses in the middle of this flatter than flat countryside. Um, uh, and, and really, that's, that's one of the areas. There's another area in a little place called Little Plumpton. They are tiny, tiny little places with fields next to them because these drills, these drilling areas, don't take up an awful lot of space. They, they can be put in there at a fairly small, short notice uh, and put up and then taken down fairly quickly. So they're not huge gas fields. Um, but the plan for Quadrilla is to, to build four drill sites in these two villages. Um, uh, they will drill down a mile into the ground uh, and they will squirt high pressure chemicals with, with great big force which force up the gas bubbles that are underground back up the pipe and it will be fed into the national grid. But the locals aren't happy. They, they quest, there are questions about the chemicals used, about what happens to the waste water uh, that, that comes out of the ground as well. Are the fumes safe? And it's inevitable that with any technology like this that whatever the company says, and the company says that everything is safe and everything is in place, some people though simply won't believe them. You've only got to get some rumour of perhaps a, a leakage of um, contamination of the water. And even if that message is unfounded, then it will stop people buying Lancashire cheese and milk and meat. So people will be put off. And once they've stopped buying it, it's very, very difficult then to get them to buy it again. I'm very delighted, very, very happy that that recommendation has been made. But I'm cautious because it's only been recommended for refusal on the one issue, which is noise. And the more serious issues are the health issues. I just came through the door this morning. I didn't know till I came here for a meeting and I was greeted with that as soon as I walked through. I was quite emotional about it, actually, because we've been doing this for a long time now, a year. It's an amazing, amazing result today for us. Everyone has worked tirelessly on this campaign for several years now. I'm so pleased for the residents group here. Um, it does feel like we're one step closer, but we know that we know that there will be appeals. Uh, we're just hoping that the councillors act in the best interest to protect the health and safety of the people of the files. Um, so we hope, um, we trust that they will make the right decision. Some views of local people there. So Nick, how likely is it that the committee will heed the recommendation? Right, nine out of ten times that a bunch of councillors get together with a recommendation from a planning officer, they will go with what the planning officer suggests. That's why they're paid an awful lot of money 
and councillors, frankly, aren't. But councillors are elected, uh, and they they only get elected if they're popular. So I think the the main thing that's going to be on the minds of the councillors is what is the most popular vote for uh, the way that they will vote, and what will it do to their chances of getting elected in the future, as well, of course, as what as the, doing the right decision for the whole uh, of Lancashire. But the the problem is is that even if the council decides to to vote no and back the recommendations of the planning officer, the decision could well be called in either, as Francis Egan from Quadrilla said, either for a review and a, uh, a, a, a an appeal, or by the government, who are very very keen on fracking, and it could be overturned, and we could still see fracking here. So this is very much just a uh, an idea of the way that the wind is going to blow, mm. and it's not a final decision. That final decision will be made by Lancashire County Council next week. It could just really be the start of the battle. Thank you very much. That's Nick Garnett for us. If you're in uh, some parts of South Yorkshire and Greater Manchester today and thinking, why haven't you spoken about the snow yet? It's holding me up. I've not been able to get to work today. It's everywhere. We will. I know it's very annoying if you're suffering with something and a yeah. national radio station aren't bothering to talk about it. We will mention <laughs> it after half past and we'll get a bit of an update. You had a bit of an issue, didn't you, bless you? It